One of the really powerful tools that you have in Premiere Pro CS6 is something for stabilizing footage. So if I play, this is actually a standard definition NTSC piece of footage. If I just click the spacebar to play, you'll see that it's all over the place. It's handheld footage and the guy is obviously very nervous because of the elephants being so close and you can see it's all over the place and that's actually really difficult for the viewer to watch. So the tool in Premiere Pro CS6 to deal with this, and this was previously only available in After Effects, is called the Warp Stabilizer. And it's called the Warp Stabilizer because the way it analyzes the footage and warps it to make sure that it is a lot more stable. So to find it, you go to your Effects tab and you just start typing Warp, W-A-R-P. Well, by the time I've got to that, you can see it's under Distort, Warp Stabilizer, and I can drag and drop that on and then it analyzes immediately in the background. You can carry on doing other things, but it's going to analyze it in the background. You don't have to do anything, you can just let it go. You have to wait for it to finish and then look at the end result. So you need to remember what it was like before and then wait for it to finish. And we can see up here how long it's taken. Okay, so it's 89, 90, 92, 94. So it's finished doing the first stage. Now it's doing the stabilizing stage, which is a lot quicker. Be done in just a moment. And now when I hit the spacebar to play, so select the sequence, hit the spacebar, you'll see that there is some movement, but pretty much all of that handheld judder has gone. There's just a smooth motion. Okay, now let's have a little look at some of the options that we've got over here. So we've got the warp stabilizer, it's done its analysis, and the results are smooth motion. You do have the option to say no motion. And if I click no motion, it will reanalyze it or restabilize it as the case may be. So it's going to restabilize it and now where we had movement before it's going to be absolutely static but did you notice that it also scaled? It got a lot bigger when I actually did that. Now I'm going to go back to smooth motion and watch it go back down in size. So it's stabilizing but already you see it's gone down. And we can see here actually it says auto scale 103 percent now so it was 105% when it was on no motion, and it's 103% on smooth motion. And we can change the amount of smoothness that it allows. Basically, if there is a change, if the camera's moving slowly one way or the other, as well as all the, the jumps and judders, the warp stabilizer allows the camera, if you like, to smoothly move from one place to another, rather than having all the jolts and judders. And it's doing it through a method. Okay, and this is the type of method it chooses. At the moment it's choosing subspace warp, which sounds like something straight out of Star Trek. But actually what's happening is it is looking at all of the pixels and warping the image to be able to keep it as smooth as possible. Now sometimes that can cause the images to look a little bit weird and you do need to be careful. You do need to view the image afterwards just to check that there isn't some unusual warping in the actual image that you've come up with. If that's the case, you want to choose one of the other methods now it goes from the quickest method down to the longest method. Okay, so position is going to be very quick to do, but the results aren't going to be fantastic. So if I just click position, finishes it stabilizing, and you can see it's scaled less, and yeah, it's not bad. There's a little bit more movement. It's just looking at position. You can see the camera actually rolling side to side on that one. So now let's go to position scale and rotation so it's going to try and deal with that rolling movement of the camera that we had there so let's just have a little look that's certainly not bad still got a little bit of a rolling going on there the next one is perspective where it's actually sort of moving the perspective of the shot to get the end result and there we go we've got quite a nice result and then finally we go back to subspace warp Go back to the beginning, it's doing its stabilizing thing, and you've seen this already. That's definitely the smoothest result for what we've got here. Okay, so there are different methods to be able to do that. And then you've got, what do we do with the edges? Now, this is where framing comes in. And at the moment, what it's saying is, I'll just click all the options, but it's saying I'm going to stabilize the shot, and then I'm going to crop it and auto-scale it so it fits within the borders. And you can see here, it says auto-scale is 103.2%. If you stabilize it only and you push the spacebar, you'll see that the edges start to pull in. And this is how it stabilizes it. It works out how it needs to move the frame to keep it stable. So stabilize only isn't particularly any good for us. So let's look at stabilizing crop. 
and then we have a constant border all the way around of course that's not particularly much use to us either so what we actually need to do is stabilize crop and auto scale and auto scale is just going to scale the actual image so we don't have those black lines that were around it previously there is I wonder if you noticed another option down here which talks about stabilize and synthesize edges now synthesize edges means create edges that aren't actually there so actually making pixels to fill in the blank spaces that will be there so we don't have to auto scale it we can keep it roughly the same size and when you choose this particular synthesize edges you do have some options down here in the advanced section obviously you do have options for additional scale here so we can do a more detailed analysis it'll just make everything take a lot longer to do we've got something called rolling shutter ripple which is to do with the rolling shutter effect when you've got CMOS camera chips I'm going to be doing a tutorial on rolling shutter repair which is a new effect added to CS6 you can get some rolling shutter ripple repair sorted out in the warp stabilizer but if you've got a rolling shutter issue it might be better actually just to choose the rolling shutter repair effect and uh, we'll deal with that in another tutorial okay now we're looking at the synthesis range okay so we've got synthesis input range how many seconds um, in other words how long is it looking before and after the shot to try and work out where it can copy and paste if you like pixels to fill in the gaps now at the moment it's saying 0.5 of a second before and after so let's just pull it through and go forward and just see if we can see any black lines coming in so push play and just keep an eye on it and see if there's any All right, I'm gonna actually have to render this so I'm gonna hit the enter key and render it so that took a little while to actually do this is where the advantage of having a really good graphics card in your machine pays off I don't have a particularly great one on this machine but as I pull through I can see a little bit of edge problem over here and a few other times there's minor edge problems but overall that's done a pretty good job now what I could do is I could increase the time so in other words say rather than just looking half a second why don't you look a whole second ahead or alternatively I could just crop the edge so it's the right hand side I could just crop the right hand side a little bit not a bit too much just crop the right hand side to about there that gets rid of the problem and then I need to render again so give this a moment to render and complete the crop and you see I've got the crop there so what I need to do now is scale the whole item to get rid of that additional problem so I can go up to addition scale and just scale it a little bit it's far too much just say 101 101 percent possibly 102 the absolute minimum that we need to get rid of those edges so it probably wasn't worth it on this particular one but um, we could still do that and then I'd need to render it again to deal with it so under that basis what would probably have been better is not to have bothered to crop it so take it back to 100 the scale take that back to zero and actually try first of all to take it a full second forward when it does its analysis so click that it's stabilizing again by the way if you want to turn these banners off you can actually turn them off here but I think they're useful to see what's going on so I'll leave the banner going let it do its thing probably now need to actually render it again but let's just pull it through and see where you get to nope I'm gonna to have to render it because as I say I don't have a very powerful card in this particular machine so I shall render this and come back to you so just to make it clear what's happening here is my slow machine slowly works through this with this synthetic edges or synthesized edges the whole clip is looking a whole second in advance to try and discover if there are pixels that can fill any potential gaps that there might be it's not done a perfect job over here I can still see a few issues but it's a lot better than it was before and the overall scaling is going to have been a lot less than it would have been otherwise so that's the warp stabilizer an incredibly valuable tool so here it is after warp stabilizing with synthesized edges there are a few marks on the edges it's not perfect I think if I was actually going to use this particular one I would almost certainly go for this particular one stabilized crop and auto scale um, and again it would be synthesizing it and that would be the solution that I'd probably go for which plays back without having to render so let's play it back before and after here is after after the warp stabilizer has been applied that's the end result and before look like this 
a very difficult thing to watch.